Hi and welcome to the video. In this video, we're looking at Notion Forms and that's a new feature that's been rolled out recently from Notion. So I'm going to explain how you can create forms in three different ways and also show a use case and the whole process of creating a form and how to share it with users, whether it be internal only or external users in Notion. The first thing that I noticed is that there are three ways to create forms in Notion. The first one is from scratch. So if I'm on a page, for example, I can type slash form, then I can select the dedicated command right there. And this automatically creates a form or a form builder as it is called right here, as well as a new database whose view is called responses. The database name is new form, as I can see here, and this is where responses are stored. So this makes me understand that forms is a view of a database. That's essentially what it is. And I can also tell because from this new form database, if I go on the three dots and I go to layout, I can see that these are the available layouts here. And if I were to create a new view of that database, one of the available views is form. So I can't turn an existing database view into a form, but I can create a new database view that is a form. Now, once I have the form, then there is the form builder right here, and I can set up the form. That is the next stage of the video. For now, let's see also how you can create forms in existing databases. For example, let's go into this database here. That's a database that contains contacts. And if I want to create a form from here, I can select plus, then form. And now Notion is asking me if I want it to pre-populate the form with questions that are properties already present in the contacts database in this example, or if I want to start from scratch so that I can select my own properties from the database. So if I start from scratch, then I have the form builder right here and I can set all the questions that I want that are automatically linked with the property that the question comes from. Now let's take a look at how to effectively create a form and populate it with all the questions needed. Be aware that forms are available on all plans, also the free one. For this use case, we're going to look at the deals database. So let's say that's a company that works in B2B, maybe an agency that has company clients and is stores deal opportunities, so potential clients in a database in Notion. Maybe this company has sales reps and they want people to quickly enter data into the database without getting lost in the Notion features overwhelm that sometimes might be the case, especially for people who don't care much about learning the tool itself. So for that, I'm going to open the deals database and create a forms view and see all the configuration options that we have there. Okay, here is the deals database. There are many views here and I'm going to add an additional one. And this is going to be a new form that shows up here directly. And from this, I will start from scratch. The first thing that I do is rename this view, add a deal. Okay, then give the form a title. That's the actual title that people are going to see when they submit the form. Then I can add an icon and a cover image as well. Okay, next up, I can add the description. It can be useful to explain what this form is about. For now, I'm going to leave it empty. And then here I can see there is some configuration options for sharing the form externally versus internally. You're going to see that later once the form is completed. For now, let's create all the fields in it. So the first thing that I see is the name. And when I click on it, I can see it is highlighted, similar to how the groups within the new layout builder are highlighted when you customize the layout. And I made a dedicated video about the Notion layout builder recently. So here is the name of the deal. And I can make it required if I like. In this case, that must be filled out. Otherwise, we don't know what that deal is about. Then we can add a description here. And this is to describe what this question means, if that's needed. So here, for example, we could say the name of the company plus the month, e.g. Nike, November 2024. So descriptions are usually a good way to explain exactly what, how we want the data to be formatted, especially if the data is free text, like in this case, the name so that the data that comes into the database is standardized as much as possible. And that makes it easier to clean up the data to make sure that it is always clean and uh, useful. And that if we export it, maybe to import it into another tool, we don't need to do too much manipulation. We can allow a long answer that is without any character limit. That's not useful for name, which needs to be just a short identifier. Then the question type is title. That's great. And view link property allows me to see where the answer to this question will be stored in the database. So it will be stored in the name property that is of type title. Let's go back. And in here I can sync it with the property name or not. If I sync it with property name, if I change here the name of the question, that will also change the name of the property in the database. So that's a structural change. So I think this is something to be aware of and to pay attention to when creating a form because if you link a question to the property name, if you change a question to make it more user-friendly, 
then it also changes the property name and that's dangerous especially if you use the API for example and you rely on property names as opposed to IDs that can break things so I would say I would be very cautious about this when creating forms but if instead I do not sync the property name then I can change uh, the question for example what is the name and then if I go to a view I can see that the name of that property doesn't change you can see here name remains name despite I changed the question related to it in the form and now essentially I can add additional questions I click the plus button I can see existing properties here that I can add to the form and I can see new questions meaning new database properties essentially so it's like adding a new database property that then gets synced with the form question in this case I want to look at last contacted so that's the last contacted date okay and then the owner so who is the deal owner here and you can see here it would be nice to directly pass as a variable the respondent of the form that is not possible right now at least to set a user to a field automatically directly in the form it is possible however if you create an automation assuming that sales reps have a notion account so that um, they do not fill out the form anonymously so we're gonna set the owner we're gonna set notes and here we can make it a long answer like that and we're gonna also allow the value that's required that's the monetary value of the deal and the source and you can see ideally i would be able to move things around here and maybe make a horizontal layout with multiple questions in one single row but that is not currently possible so the layout is only horizontal right here okay let's say that's enough for now that's a good form let's go on the three dots here I can see new question allows me to add a new question that's good automations allows me to access the automations editing panel there is an automation in this entire database that's why here is one then I can customize form and if I do that I can customize the color of the form in this case I'm going to make it red so that it aligns with the overall template then I'm gonna here set submit I think that's a good text and I can set the confirmation title and body for example as a title I would say success deal successfully added to the database okay these are all the configuration options that i see now let's go to the share menu i'm gonna do change here this opens up the share menu for the form and there are three options when it comes to sharing anyone in the workspace that has the link anyone on the web that has the link to the form so this means whether they have a notion account or not they can fill out the form or i can do no access meaning that even if a person has the link to the form they can't submit any answer so if i do anyone on the web will link you can see that there is one field that is not supported so i'll say got it and then there are two additional settings that show up i can set the notion branding either keep it on or remove it the notion branding is the icon the logo that appears at the top right corner of a publicly shared form that has the made with notion tag as you can see here from the image on the screen and i can allow anonymous responses and this is only possible if the form is shared with anyone in the notion workspace so for now let's do anyone at simo with a link so only people that have access to the notion workspace can submit data in here this is the link that i can share with them okay now i've just opened the form in a new tab that's what i see i'm submitting responses to user and then here i can enter information when i can select the date the owner i can select myself or i can leave it empty next up i'm going to show you how we could set up an automation to fill out the owner automatically and then there's the value source and submit not have the success message that i saw if I want, I can view my response, and this will open up the Notion page in the DL database. So because I have access to the database, I can see the response right here. And these are all the properties populated. You can see also the owner has been populated, and that's because it has the setting that the default is created by. So in that case, this would solve the issue if you want to populate the owner automatically. Because as long as the user has a Notion account, then they would be listed as the owner because of this setting. But if you didn't have this setting on, then creating an automation that whenever there is a new deal adds the owner to the property based on the person who submitted the form, that would be useful and resolve that issue for you. And to show you how to implement that automation, if you are interested, you can first set a new property that is created by so that we can track that here. And then in the deals database, I'm going to add an automation. The trigger would be page added and the action would be edit property, owner, page creator, done. And now if you do create, that would be opt activated and whenever a deal is created, the page creator will be set as the owner. So that means that we don't even need the property that I created. So we don't need created by in that case. Here I'm going to set this to delete question. And if I delete a question, it doesn't delete the property. So the property remains intact. As you can see here, owner is still there. But the question in the form doesn't exist anymore. And this concludes the overview of forms 
in Notion currently. Two limitations that you need to be aware of as of right now, that is November 2024. One is that you can't embed the form on an external web page, only in Notion. And the second limitation is that form submissions create new pages in the database. You can't update a page in a database to a form submission unless you use automation for that. That is outside of the scope of this video. Thank you for watching this video. If you have questions, let me know in the comments below or contact me via the link in the description. See you soon.